hello everyone so in the part one i had explained about the working of the encoder circuits and in the second part i'm going to explain what are the priority encoder circuits so priority encoder circuits are designed for overcoming the ambiguity that arises in the simple encoder circuits when two switches are actually turned on at a time then what should be the output combination all right so priority encoders will prioritize the input of the higher subscripted value as explained in the previous lecture so let's say if you have switched on two input lines d1 and d3 then the output should generate the values for x and y equal to 1 rather than generating for 0 and 1 since d3 has the higher subscripted values all right <clears throat> another problem that was present in the simple encoder circuits was the output 0 0 is reserved for the input line d0 is equal to 1 and the same output is produced when there is no input present so these two problems are handled in the priority encoder circuits when no input is present then the valid input v should be equal to zero and whenever some input line is on then v should be equal to one so using these two technologies or techniques or the concepts we will be designing a priority encoder circuit so starting from the 4 to 2 line encoder circuit let's say we are having the input lines d0 d1 d2 and d3 and here you will have the output line x and y and an other output which is defined as the v as long as all the input lines are equal to zero you don't care about the output if the valid input is equal to zero so you will not consider the output value as long as you are not having certain valid input line as you will turn on any input line so yeah, when you will turn on any of these single input line you will get the value of v equal to 1 that's why you can simply implement the valid input function by taking the or of all input lines and at the output side you should get 0 0 0 1 1 0 and then 1 1 so it can be seen now the output value 0 0 has been reserved for the input line d0 is equal to 1 now let's try the function expressions for this output lines we can simply see that v is actually the or of d0 d1 d2 and d3 fine and for driving the expressions for the output function x and y we will consider those combinations of the input when we are getting their value equal to 1 one thing more when this value is equal to 1 these inputs will be equal to 0 when d0 is equal to 1 now let's see how we will change it we will not care about what's the value of d0 since the higher subscripted value as compared to d0 is equal to 1 similarly when d2 is equal to 1 we will not care about the value of d1 and similarly when d3 is equal to 1 the rest of the input variables are marked as the don't care conditions since d3 has the highest priority as compared to the rest of the input lines all right so now let's see how we will drive the function for the x you can see we are getting the value of x is equal to 1 for the input combinations so x is equal to 1 for the input combinations don't care don't care 1 and 0 I mean we are talking about this combination and then the other combination that is producing x is equal to 1 is don't care don't care don't care and 
वन ओके कोरिस्पॉन्डिंग टू दिस मेन टर्म्स वी विल गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ द फंक्शन एक्स ओके सो लेट सी वट आर दोज हिडन मेन टर्म्स For x, we can see don't care, don't care one and zero. Since these two bits have the fixed value equal to one and zero, and these higher bit values can take the values of zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Okay. While keeping these bits fixed. This will correspond to the min term m two. It will correspond to the min term m six, m ten, and finally m fourteen. Okay. Similarly, for the min terms don't care, don't care, don't care, and then one, we will try the three bit combination where we can change the values as zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one. One zero zero one zero one double one zero and triple one while keeping the last bit equal to one again. So these are the hidden mean terms. We don't need to write down all the four bit possible combinations for that. Now this will correspond to mean term one, m three, m five, m seven. M nine, M eleven, M thirteen, and finally M fifteen. While the output is in the don't care conditions for the input combination zero 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 zero. Now let's see or draw the K map for determining the value of the function. This bit. Will mark as the don't care condition since we are having output value equal to in the don't care mode for the combination zero and zero. Fine. And for filling or placing the rest of the min terms, we have min term equal to m m one is equal to one, m two is equal to one, m three equal to one. Zero one two three four is uh, then M five M six M seven and if you will place all the mean terms, you will get these square boxes filled like that. Okay, and according to the K map, we can join these eight adjacent squares. Giving us the expression for the output variable x is equal to only this value is equal to one d three then plus again joining these eight mean terms you will get d three plus d two so x can be determined by taking the or of d two and d three similarly for the variable y we are getting the output value. Is equal to one for the input combination. Don't care one zero. Don't care one zero and then zero and then don't care and finally one, which is similar to the min terms we have already determined for for the variable x. So let's mark it as y can. be represented as the summation of the mean terms 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 and then 15 and for these input combinations where don't care 1 0 0 can be represented either as 0 1 0 0 or 1 1 0 0 since this variable can either take the value of 0 or 1 Corresponding to that, you will get the mean term m four and then m twelve. All right, so you can mark it as four and twelfth mean term summation. And these are the total mean terms that are required for representing the function of y.
if you place these mean terms in the KMAG, you will again get the don't care condition over here and these eight mean terms are marked as one and finally you have completed all the mean terms or placed all the mean terms in this k-map now let's write the function for the y first we will again join these eight adjacent squares and this will give the value of the y is equal to d3 then or of now you can see we can either combine these four y, uh, four squares or these four squares but we will prefer to combine these four squares why because we are not supposed to cover the don't care conditions our first priorities are the main terms whose values are equal to one all right when you will uh, combine these four adjacent squares you will get the function of d1 uh, and then the complement of d2 in this way we have determined the value of the output functions easily now you can draw the logic diagram for it So let's draw the logic diagram of the priority encoder circuit. If you are having the variables, D0, D1, D2 and D3, the output V is formed by taking the or of all these input lines okay let's do it so i'll take the or function of d0 d1 d2 and finally d3 for getting the value of what b then in the next step you have to find the summation of d2 and d3 for x so d2 and d3 are odd for getting the value of the output function x and finally d3 is added with the complement of D2, so you will take the note of D2 and then you will or it, sorry, and it with D1. So take the and of these two inputs and finally add it into D3. Hence, you will get the output function for the y. So, this is the design of the priority encoder circuit. I hope uh, it's clear now. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any question related to the topic, you can drop your questions in the comment section. And also, if you like the lecture, please like and subscribe to my channel.